Hello, this session is for students about the personal project report. If you've missed the session, please watch the whole of this video, or if you maybe dozed out for part of it, you have this video to refer back to as well. So the report's what is graded from the personal project, so it's really important that you follow the right format and listen to my top tips throughout. So the report, this is a description from the IB. You're going to see the main thing that you recognize is probably that it's uh, covering those four objectives, investigating, planning, taking action, and reflecting. And that's actually how your project, your project report will be laid out. Um, throughout the year, when we've been meeting with our supervisors, we've been uh, discussing these things. So it's going to be super easy to write about. Also, the things that we have done in advisory, the process journal checklist I've given you, they link to each of these objectives. So you're going to find you have more than enough evidence to talk about each of them. As it says, you need to include evidence for all strands. Um, there's 12 strands, but you can only put 10 process journal entries. So you might refer to one uh, process journal entry several times in different strands. You might also put evidence as a real descriptive example of something you've done, or maybe a stat, a fact, a quote that you've um, found throughout your research. So I'm going to dive straight in and show you the layout. It's going to look super familiar to you. You're going to start with criterion A, investigating. So you're going to, the best way I do would do it is just write a paragraph or two for each thing with evidence and you can go back make sure you keep those um, those strands as a subtitle you can read the subtitles later if you want but what happens is you're going to write so much you're probably going to write way over the word count and then you're going to edit out to make it shorter you want to make sure you don't accidentally edit out everything you've written for criterion a strand two for example so here we go, the first one, clear goal, global context, and that's based on your personal interest as well. Make sure your global context, this is you describing why you've chosen that one, why it really fits in, but you should make sure that the language from the global context and the descript the um, exploration is throughout your report. The second one is um, prior learning and subject-specific knowledge. Now this is an area that IB says that uh, MIP students are often weak with because maybe you're doing a project about making a music video and you might say, well, I've never made a music video before, so I have no subject-specific knowledge. But maybe, for example, you've done storyboards in theatre. Maybe you've done movie editing in history. Maybe you've um, had to interview someone for a unit you were doing in art, so you would talk about those things there. And lastly, demonstrate research skills. In this section, you're really going to talk about how you did your research, what was the most important, what influenced you the most, how you evaluated your sources to make sure they were credible, but your research is actually going to be throughout the whole report. So this is you just describing that process. But throughout the report, you might have some in-text citations. So you might, for example, when you're talking about creating your success criteria, you might say, I watched loads of videos and analyzed them. The one that I found the most useful and that uh, people said was the most inspiring in my feedback survey was Single Ladies by Beyonce. Um, in the enemy uh, music video article, it said that the reason it was so... Uh, impactful on the audience was because it's shot in black and white therefore I'm also going to make my uh, video in black and white so that's actually you're talking about research in a different part of the report so make sure you do that criterion b this is pretty straightforward develop your criteria um, plan and record the development process of the project so here you might talk about any hiccups you've had um, what things you spent more time on you're going to show us really exactly how you made your finished product or outcome like what were the different steps tell us about that and then demonstrate self-management skills. Now, the IB says that people often, when they talk about self-management skills, they just talk about time management. So make sure you're talking about all the different skills. So earlier in the year, when we reflected on this, you had the spreadsheet of all the ATLs, and it showed you the different headings. For example, one of the headings is effective skills, and you pulled out something that you've been demonstrating or working on in the project. So make sure you do not just focus on time management or organization. Have a look in that list, and you'll see it's things like dealing with stress, um, things that all personal project students have had to do this year. Um, criterion C is taking action, and you'll find that that's pretty easy as well. And you'll see that we have thinking skills here, communication and social skills, self-management and research. Those are the five ATLs. So again, when you write about thinking skills, communication or social, you're going to go back to that ATL uh, spreadsheet that I've shared with you. When we look at communication as well, we're also checking that you've used the correct um, format, that you've used in-text citations throughout your report. And finally, evaluating the 
the quality of the product outcome against the criteria. So make sure it's against the criteria. Don't just say all the good things that happen in your product. Even if everything went well, you might look at your product and say all the things that you could do if you were doing it again. Maybe if you had an unlimited budget or an unlimited time or you had the skills now that you, you didn't have at the beginning. You're going to reflect on how it's improved your knowledge and understanding of the topic. And again, talk about the global context. And lastly, the development is the IB learner throughout the project. So here you're going to look at maybe the IB learner profile, maybe the IB's mission statement. So the report can take different formats. It can be written, it can be a website, blog, slideshow, a podcast, oral, um, a film. I really recommend doing the written one because if you try and choose uh, the other versions, you actually basically have to write a really, really, really detailed script. This is going to be as detailed as the written one and you're going to have to work at how you're going to uh, do in-text citations, that kind of thing, refer to your evidence, you know, or it's kind of more complicated. So I would really steer everyone towards doing the written one. However, if you do want to try a different format, please book an appointment with me. So requirements, your four clear sections based on the objectives. Every strand has to be addressed. You can have up to 10 process journal entries at the end. That's a one page each. Your bibliography, which is on an MLA 8, a cover sheet, and your academic honesty sheet. And at the end, you're also going to upload evidence, which can be 30 seconds of video or um, five photographs. If it is a video, it, has to, it can't be screenshots from a video. It has to be part of the video. So here's some more information that I'm going to skip through. This is just uh, more details from the IB. And that kind of may be sounding a bit complicated, but I'm going to show you how easy it's going to be with these two documents. So the first one is the is the layout. So you're going to actually go in and put in your title, put in your subtitle, your global context, your name, and then it has the contents page for you. You're going to go at the end and add in your page numbers, and then it has each space. So again, title, and you're going to write a paragraph or two for each strand. At the end, you have your bibliography, which is all the sources you've used, but then um, that's why you've been using Noodle Tools throughout to keep that that list and also anything that you quote in your report should be able to easily link to the bibliography and then your 10 process journal entries so that's going to be your uh, template then I also have this document here which for each strand it has a description it has possible questions to help you answer possible evidence and that will include things you've done with your supervisor or in advisory it gives you a description of what a seven to eight looks like and if you click on this link, it has a description for each area. So maybe write your report and look at what a uh, one or two looks like, a three or four, and make sure that you are hitting those top marks. Let me get rid of that five. And then um, lastly, essay examples and appendix examples. So the essay examples, that's the body of the report. And the appendix is process journal entries. So I haven't given you a single complete report to look at. I've just given you sections. And you'll see that students choose different, different methods. And these are ones that got six, seven, or eight. And again, I'll show you here. The process journal entries. So that should help you write your report. And it has that for every single um, strand. Those five areas that I talked to you about, which have the um, ATLs, so research, communication, social, self-management, and thinking. Again, I have this spreadsheet for you. When you come to write about them, for example, thinking skills sounds kind of vague, but if you go and click on the thinking tab, you're going to see exactly how it's broken down. And you might say, oh, yeah, of course I interpreted the data. And of course, I created a novel solution to an authentic problem. So you're going to pick out some of these to write about. I recommend picking out at least one from each column, especially when it comes to self-management. Try not to just do time management and organizational skills. Look at the effective and reflective skills. So moving on from that, those are the documents you're going to probably have open your computer when we're working on the reports. But I just wanted to show you some top tips from the IB. So you need to have evidence for every single strand. Make sure that you don't um, forget that. And again, the required structure will be assessed in criterion C, strand three, which is communication skills. Um, 
again, provide evidence, and that can be in your bibliography and your post journal, and you're going to have your photographs at the end. You need to talk about your global context throughout the whole report. So don't just mention it in that first bit. Say, oh yeah, it kind of fits in that I did this. Really, really link that throughout because that's the main takeaway you should be having. You should be talking about the importance of your global context in the reflection even. Again, uh, the approaches to learning. People are struggling with writing about those, but you have the spreadsheet and done activities throughout the year to help you. When you're writing your report, each paragraph, I would use peel to make your point. Uh, use your evidence, that could be a quote, a stat, a fact, or talking about your project journal entry or something you did. Analyze it and then link to the next one. So Peel is a really useful way of writing your report. Okay, I'm going to go, give you two examples of personal project reports, a good one and a bad one. So I did lots of research about unicorns throughout the process to make sure I knew enough for my project. I made sure to evaluate my sources and only use those that are reliable. I thought I knew a lot about unicorns, but from doing my research, I learned so much. So much more. This enabled me to set clear goals which helped me develop my goals for my project. So that's really just a load of waffle. They haven't really told us exactly what they did, they haven't told us what research, where they found the information, what information they actually used. It's very, very vague, there's no evidence in here. Someone could just wake up one morning and write this and, and tell me did that. So the next example is after reading several books about unicorns and evaluating them, see Appendix 5. So Appendix 5 would be a source evaluation um, from the process journal. I decided that Unicorns Rock, and then I have my in-text citation, um, was the most reliable source. resource. This is because the author, Mr. Rainbow, is a professor of Unicorn Studies at Hogwarts, and because this book was published by Jesse Bash. They have evaluated their source, a well-established academic publisher. The most useful information from this book for me is the best unicorns are glittery. The information directly linked to my success criteria, as you can see in point two, my unicorns must sparkle. Um, and the other key text was. So they've given examples of how, how the research has helped them, they've made it actually relevant to their project, and then they have their bibliography at the end. So it contains evidence of research, it shows how the research actually impacted the project. So it wasn't just like they did a bunch of research and then they did their project. Um, they used the appendix to show more research, um, it's, it does not impact the word count, and it has citations and is specific. Now, with here, what I would say is when I say use the appendix, some students last year and the year before, they said, oh yeah, I did loads of um, research and they said, see source evaluation. So they had the appendix at the end. And that's fine, but this appendix has to back up what they're saying. So here the person has said that they have, they have evaluated a whole bunch of sources, but they're still telling us about one of the main sources that helped them. So they're not just relying on us skipping to the end and looking at their source evaluation. That's going to support. So I'm going to see if maybe they've done something similar with the other sources. So key dates that we have coming up, your deadline for meeting with your supervisor and the day that you hand in your first report is February 16th. You're going to meet with them again on the 26th and they're going to give you feedback on the report or before the 26th. Um, Tuesday the 13th of March is when your final report is due in. You must get your supervisor to finally sign off on the academic honesty form then. So you probably want to have it handed in before then so they can read it to check that you have been academically honest. And then we have our... Um, exhibition on March 28th. So top tips, if you complete your first job as much as possible, you're going to get lots of useful feedback. Um, lots of people sometimes given like only done criteria A and B, or maybe it's only half done or bullet points, you're not really going to get good feedback like that. If you have it done as to the highest standard you can and then you get feedback, it's going to be even better. Um, use the feedback that your supervisor gives you. They're going to give it to you criterion by criterion. Don't be late. Uh, if you want to set your own deadline a few days before that, I would. And then exhibition is a time to celebrate. So follow those requirements and top tips and you can't go wrong. We're going to spend the rest of the time working on our personal project reports.